Our top story at this hour, in a fresh blow to the Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida's administration, the country's internal affairs minister has resigned in connection with the funding scandal. And in the latest, Kishida has appointed former Foreign Minister Takayaki Matsumoto as the new internal affairs minister of the country. Minoru Terada had tendered his resignation after various reports surfaced on how Kishida was planning to sack him. Terada's exit came on the final day of Kishida's diplomatic tour to Thailand for the APEC summit. And right ahead of the budget deliberations in Parliament. Terada is the third cabinet member to leave in less than a month. Before him, two other cabinet ministers also staged a walkout. On November 11th, Japan's Justice Minister Yasuhiro Hanashi stepped down over death penalty comments. The former Justice Minister was widely criticized over an offhand remark he made about approving capital punishment. Before him, on October 24th, Japan's economy minister, Daishiro Yamagiwa, also tendered his resignation over his failure to explain how his relationship with the unification charge. He was the first cabinet member to resign under Prime Minister Fumio Kishida's government. The string of cabinet departures are being called as resignation dominoes, which can further pile pressure on the Japanese prime minister. A poll conducted over the weekend before the third cabinet resignation found that only 30.5% of respondents approved of Kishida, while 51% disapproved of how he handled the resignation of the previous two ministers. And for more on this, our correspondent Chris Gilbert is, jo is joining us live from Tokyo. Hi, Chris. Apart from these scandals, what else might be stalking some of these Japanese, prime minister, uh, Japanese ministers to leave in a half? And despite the prime minister appointing new faces, is this really going to solve the problem? Well, the Prime Minister has had to come back from the hard work of international diplomacy at uh, APEC and the G20 over the last week or so and really start the week on the back foot here uh, with newspapers all pointing out that three of his key ministers have stepped down in just under a month, as you mentioned. Uh, first, it was the economic revitalization minister. Uh, he was a victim of uh, the spotlight on the unification church uh, since the assassination of Shinzo Abe back in July, the former prime minister. This has been a big issue in Japan, and many, many LDP ruling party lawmakers have been found to now have connections to the Unification Church and the Economic Revitalization Minister has stepped down because of that. Then it was the Justice Minister, a more avoidable situation, a verbal gaffe from him saying that uh, the media is interested in his portfolio only when the issue of the death penalty comes up. And now we have a crucial role, the Internal Affairs Minister, and very serious allegations of where his funding has been coming from and who he has been paying and compensating uh, during the upper house uh, elections last July. Now, for Kishida, he is meant to have clean shop already. In August, he did a cabinet reshuffle, uh, promised that, you know, that some of the dead wood had been cleared out, a fresh start for his administration going forward. But since then, polls I've been following have shown his approval rating, his cabinet's approval rating, mm -hmm. uh, going from 37% to 33%. His disapprovals overtook his approvals, and now it's around 27%, and three ministerial resignations certainly don't help. Chris, let's talk more about your last point there, that the confidence rate on the Prime Minister Fumio Kishida is dwindling. Could you tell us more about that? And what is it that people dislike about the Prime Minister? Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. So there are three main things. Uh, that are really pulling the Prime Minister and Cabinet's approval ratings down at the moment. First of all, as I mentioned earlier, going all the way back to the assassination of former Prime Minister Abe in July, Kishida very quickly and in the public's view unilaterally uh, decided to hold a state funeral for the Prime Minister. It's very unorthodox here in Japan and the public had to pay for it and that really hurt uh, the Prime Minister's approval ratings then. And again, as I mentioned, this ongoing saga with uh, ongoing revelations of links between the ruling party and the 
Unification Church uh, have really proved to be a ball and chain as well. And that is still ongoing. There's an investigation right now in Japan uh, into the Unification Church. But really, if you go and ask people on the street today what they care about most, it's not going to be Shinzo Abe State Funeral. It's not going to be Unification Church. It's going to be their grocery bills and their energy bills. The yen is weak at the moment. Import costs are very high at the moment. And that is universally affecting everybody across the country as prices go up. And so going forward, experts have said Kishida might not mind his low approval ratings uh, because he doesn't face election or his party doesn't face election for three years. But his party might mind three ministerial resignations in a month. Uh, articles I've seen today have also said that the average LDP prime minister lasts 475 days. And they're pointing out that Fumio Kishida has just passed day 400. Right. Live from Tokyo, Japan, our correspondent Chris Gilbert. Thank you. Weon is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.